What's up guys, it's your boy MMA Striker back with another video today and today we're going to be predicting UFC 254 which is tomorrow and the card itself is a very solid card, a lot of fun fights on the card in my opinion from the main card to the prelims but let's start with the main event and let's predict Khabib versus Gaethje now this is a lightweight unification fight and probably the biggest fight of the year in my opinion but let's break this fight down now on the feet Justin Gaethje is a better striker, it's pretty obvious, but the one thing on the feet that Khabib does very well is his striking defense. He's able to get in and out of strikes and not get hit, and not get hit by some of the best strikers in the lightweight division. He was able to compete with Conor McGregor on the feet, and even dropped Conor McGregor on the feet, and he was able to shut down Dustin Poirier's striking, Edson Barboza's striking, RDA's striking, so... His striking defense is pretty impressive for the type of strikers he's fighting. And the one thing he does, his tactic on, on the defense is, he does use the post and retreat, which, which is the same thing John Jones uses. But the difference between those two is, John Jones extends his other arm because of his reach. Khabib does extends extend his other arm. He keeps it tucked in, and he has the other hand protecting his chin and his face. And he also uses head movement and duck to evade strikes. So... Khabib striking defense is pretty impressive. Now for Gaethje, his leg kicks. Now he needs to throw leg kicks in this fight in my opinion, but he has to set those up. He can't just throw those recklessly because Khabib can catch kicks very good. So if Gaethje can time leg kicks and set those up and he can do damage to Khabib's lead leg, that would be very important. That would be a big thing for him because Khabib's mobility will start to slow down and his takedown attempts and his takedown shots will become much more telegraphed and sloppy. Also, if Gaethje can get Khabib to shoot takedowns in the middle of the octagon, that'll be a, another big factor. Because if you go back and watch the Conor McGregor fight and the Ally Quinta fight, when they had when Khabib shot the first takedown on Conor in the middle of the octagon, Conor was able to stuff it until Khabib dragged it into the uh, against the fence. And uh, takedowns that Ally Quinta stuffed were in the center of the octagon. So when Khabib shoots in the center of the octagon, they're not as accurate as when he gets you up against the cage. Because if he gets you up against the cage, he's 99% going to get a takedown. So, I think Gaethje needs, if he's going to, if Khabib's, well, Khabib's going to shoot. We all know Khabib's going to shoot. But when he does shoot, if Gaethje can keep it in the center of the octagon, I think his chances of stopping a takedown are much higher than against the cage. Now, on the ground. Now, Gaethje, we all know Gaethje has a, a pretty good wrestling um, pedigree, or a good wrestling, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? A good, um, Accolades, yeah, the good accolades, D1 wrestler, all American wrestler, we all know this. But the big difference, which I also talked about in my breakdown to this fight a while back, a few months ago, is there is a difference between Dagestan style wrestling and American style wrestling. And Khabib also talked about this in the press conference. Now, Khabib knows both styles of wrestling, he knows Dagestan style wrestling, which he pretty much learned, grew up, uh, grew up learning. But he also knows the American style wrestling since being in America for about seven years. And training guys like DC, who's an Olympic wrestler, and other Olympic caliber wrestlers in the United States. He knows both both styles of wrestling. Justin Gaethje only knows one style of wrestling. That's the American style of wrestling. He's never facing anyone with Dagestan style wrestling. So that may confuse Gaethje. That may, that may throw him off a little bit since he, he's never trained or face anybody with the Dagestan style wrestling so that's another big factor nobody's really talking about also on the ground Justin Gaethje has very good very good fast and explosive scrambles he can scramble very good very fast explosive and but he did say when he does grapple it does drain him and it does tire, tire him out a lot faster than striking does so that's why he likes to keep it on the feet but the main thing I've seen in Justin Gaethje's ground game the main hole after going back and watching his World Series of Fighting Fights, and I encourage you guys to go do that if you have time. The one thing that he does is he gives up his back. And that is a big red flag for me against a guy like Khabib. You cannot give up your back against Khabib because Khabib is very good at taking people's back and submitting them. Look at the Dustin Poirier fight. Look at the Conor McGregor fight. You can't give your back up against Khabib. That's one of the big no-nos you cannot do. So... If Gaethje does that, I think he's going to put himself in even more danger and risk of a, a choke. So, that's another big factor. And also, how, how I see this fight playing, I see Khabib 
even if he can't get the takedown to the, if he can't get the fight to the ground every single time, which I don't think he will. I don't. I think Gaethje's gonna stuff some takedowns. So if he can't get the fight to the ground every single time, but keep it in the clinch and just wear on Gaethje and tire him out and grind it out and drain him, similar to how Kamaru Usman does to fighters and in the clinch and how DC does, just grind him out and drain their stamina, and drain their cardio, and over time they get more and more tired. I think if Khabib can do that. It, that could also be a very effective game plan. Now, the one another big factor is what happens if Khabib can Khabib take a, a big shot from Gaethje? Khabib has a pretty good chin of well, we haven't really seen him get cracked with anything too crazy, but I think I, I think Khabib has a good chin just from just seeing him take the shots that he he has eaten and the big punches he has taken. I think he has a pretty solid chin, but like I said, he's never been cracked flush by a powerful puncher like Justin Gaethje, so. We don't know. Can Khabib take as much damage that Tony Ferguson did? Will it take one shot to put Khabib down? We don't really know where Khabib's chin stands at to a full extent. So, but like I said earlier, Khabib take Khabib striking defense is very good. He's very good at not getting hit. So, and Gaethje cannot get he cannot panic on the feet. He cannot do what Dustin Poirier did and be so panic about the wrestling where he strike he throws a striking game while he starts winging wild overhands because if you go back and look at the Dustin Poirier fight when he did land that uh, step over that switch overhand on Khabib he got too reckless and too happy about it he got he started throwing wild overhands started throwing looping shots and he gassed himself out so Gage cannot do that he cannot if he does tag Khabib he cannot get too excited and start tiring himself out and throwing looping shots he has to be patient and pick his shots but my overall prediction for this fight I'm going to go with Khabib Nurmagomedov by decision I think over time he's going to drain Gaethje more and more but I don't think he I don't think he's going to finish Gaethje the only way I see him finishing Gaethje if, if he chokes him unconsciously I don't think Gaethje's going to tap if it's like an arm bar or something like that I think he's going to tap I think he's going to have to choke him out cold to put him away but I think he's going to win a decision 49-46 so let's move on to the co-main event, Robert Whitaker versus Jerry Cannonier, which is an amazing fight. Number one contender fight, the winner fights for the belt. And this is an, a very good style of fight, striker versus striker. Now Whitaker has been improving on his wrestling for the past year now. And he used it against Darren Till fight to win that fight in the later rounds. He took Darren Till down, which was very smart to do. Now, but the one thing I'm worried about for Robert Whitaker is his chin. Now, Robert Whitaker has a lot of heart, a lot of heart and able to recover very, very good. But his chin is not really that. It's really not really that good. It takes one big punch or a few big punches to put him down. And he has taken a lot of damage in his career. The two Romero fights took a lot out of him. Getting knocked out, pretty much knocked out twice in the Adesanya fight, took a lot out of him. And went to war with Darren Till. That takes a toll on your chin and your body. So that's also a big factor. And the Whitaker... The, of lately, his his style has kind of changed a little bit. He's not really using the stutter, the stutter steps and using his jab as much, and smartly blitzing as much as he did when he fought Jacare or Romero the first time or Uriah Hall. He's loading up these big shots, these big overhands, and he leaves he leaves himself open. If you go back and watch the Adesanya fight, he did it a lot. That's what got him knocked out. Looking for the head hunting, looking for the big one shot KO. And he even did a little bit in the Darren Till fight early on, but he adjusted in that fight. It kind of went back to his older style that he that won him the belt. So, to me, it depends what Whitaker shows up. If the Whitaker that fought Jacques Gray and Yoel Romero the first time shows up using the stutter steps, in and out blitzing, using the jab, you setting up the head kicks, I think he, the fight, this fight is a very, very close fight to pick. But if he's coming in. Head hunting, looking for the big one, the one big shot, loading up on his shots. I see Cannonier countering him and knocking him out. Cannonier has very good, ever since moving down to 185, has been very good at countering, very precise counterer, but always still has his heavyweight power. I mean, he pretty much broke Anderson Silva's leg with one leg kick. And the thing about Cannonier is he doesn't just possess power in his hands. He possesses power in his kicks, his leg kicks, body kicks, head kicks, punches. He possesses power in everything he does, and. He's ever since moving down, like I said, moving down the middle way, he's been much more technical with picking his shots. And the Jack Hermanson uh, fight, a, a counter uppercut that put Hermanson down and ultimately finished him. So, I mean, this is a tough fight to predict, but also, both guys have very good takedown defense. And also, another thing to take note is 
this fight is a three round fight so and Whitaker is pretty much known for being like a slow starter for the first two rounds and coming back in the third fourth and fifth but he cannot do that, do that this time because it's a, it is a three round fight so he has to, he can't just he can't fight start off slow he can't start off slow he can't let Kenner just do what he, he can't let Kenner get off first but he cannot he has to strike smart he has to blitz smart he can't go in there leave over extend leave himself open for Kenner to counter and put him out so, but my overall prediction for this fight, I'm going to go with Jerry Cannonier by round two knockout. I see him catching Robert Whitaker on the chin and putting him down and then ground and pounding him out for the finish. And moving on to the next fight, Alexander Volkov versus Walt Harris. This is an, another very good fight. Now, Walt Harris coming off the loss to Alistair Overeem and Alexander Volkov coming off the loss against Curtis Blaze. Now overall, Volkov is the better striker, much more technical striker. Of course, he's 6'7", has that length, has the height, has the reach. So he can very well just stay on the outside and pick, pick apart Walt Harris, pick his shots. Now Walt Harris is a powerful puncher, powerful striker. He can pressure, pressure you, get inside, get in your face, and hit you with big bombs. But his cardio is one of his issues. And we saw an Alistair Overeem fight. He did tag over him, dropped over him, had over him rocked, but he he put everything on his punches to try to get over him out of there, and that fight could have been stopped. You could have made a very well case that that fight should have been stopped, but the ref let it go on, and ultimately, ultimately, Walt Harris gassed out from trying to put over him away and just putting everything on his punches, trying to pretty much kill over him, and he gassed out. Now, that could very well happen in this fight. Say Walt Harris does rock or drop. Volkov, he tries to, he's trying to take his head off and put everything to his punches, and Volkov survives, and he's gassing out. That could also happen. Also, wrestling-wise, Raw Harris is a pretty good wrestler. He can, he has some pretty good takedowns. Same with Volkov. Volkov is a very good. Now, Alexander Volkov's takedown defense isn't the best. I mean, it's, isn't isn't the best, but his offensive takedowns are pretty good. It's underrated in my opinion, but. I mean, how I see this fight playing out, I see, I just see Alexander Volkov staying on the outside, using his reach, using his length, using his jab, using his leg kicks, and just picking, um, picking Walt Harris apart and being very technical. So my prediction for the fight is, I'm gonna go with Alexander Volkov by a decision. And that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Make sure to comment down below your predictions for the card, and make sure to subscribe and like this video. And I'll see you guys next week. Hope you guys have a great day.